Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining me for this WNCT Now digital news update. I'm Emily Severidge, live in our digital studio. Health officials say December is shaping up as the deadliest month of the COVID-19 pandemic for North Carolina. On average, an average of more than 33 people have died each day from December 1st through 21st because of the coronavirus. That's according to date of death data from the State Department of Health and Human Services. On Tuesday, the state also recorded it's now past 1,000 deaths for this month. That's the most in any month since the start of the pandemic in March, passing November's death toll of just 883. This trend follows with the national trend in which more than 50,000 people have died across the U.S. this month. That puts December on pace to surpass April's numbers where more than 60,000 people died due to the virus. Today, total deaths reported in the state are now more than 6,300 since March. There are still eight days left in the month and health officials only expect numbers to rise after the holiday weekend. We can expect a first alert weather day on Christmas Eve heading into Christmas morning, but for now, first alert meteorologist Zoe Mintz has that forecast for us. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We are looking at another beautiful sunny day ahead of us with much warmer than average temperatures in the upper 50s, even peaking near 60s along the coast. And it is a great day to get out, get all of your last minute holiday shopping done. As you take a look at your precision cast, that high pressure system that remained in place today will begin dwindling, allowing some clouds as you head into the later afternoon and then overnight hours, you might begin to see some few showers begin to pop up by early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, this is Christmas. Eve. We are going to be seeing a few showers begin in the morning with temperatures being near 70 degrees. Because of that huge influx of warm, moist air from the Atlantic, we are going to be seeing much warmer than average temperatures. So no snow, no white Christmas for us, just a good amount of rain. But you should see a few breaks in the rain by the afternoon, just pop up showers early in the morning and early afternoon. And then by later afternoon, those stronger showers will begin to become upon us. The possibility of damaging winds over 40 miles an hour, the chance for an isolated tornado and strong to severe thunderstorms are not out of the question with this system. But the good news is this is Friday at 3 a.m. So by those overnight hours, much of that action has already pushed offshore, just leaving us with some gusty winds by the time that we head into Christmas and a nice high pressure system. Today, though, we're looking at above average temperatures in the mid to upper 50s, low 60s, increasing clouds as you head into the overnight hours and into those overnight hours, really not going to dip all too low because of all those clouds keeping in much of that heat only down to the mid to upper 40s, low 50s, even possibly still around 60 along the outer banks, but then showers begin to pop up right at around 3 or 4 a.m., and those will continue throughout the day, which is why we have that first alert weather day, the chance for some strong to severe thunderstorms continuing into early Friday, but you should be able to get out and soak up some sunshine on Friday, but look at those temperatures down for the highs in the high 30s and overnight lows down to the teens. It is going to be very cold. A big cold snap is heading our way by the time that we head into the weekend. I just wanted to warn you all of that possibility for some frost to wake up to definitely Friday and Saturday morning. So be prepared, soak up some sunshine today if you can, but definitely grab an umbrella and be weather aware as you head into Christmas Eve. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back with some more news after this short break. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. You're watching live coverage of a news conference. Live to breaking news. We're live outside. Of Joins us live in Kinston, in Jacksonville, in New Bern, now in Greenville. Dangerous conditions. We don't dare drop our guard. Rip currents can be really hard to spot. The Washington waterfront. Chair pieces and cable lines. Walking you through the story. Go Working day in and day out. This election. Unprecedented. I did speak to the Board of Elections director. We are there with you. We're on your side. Nine on your side. Weekdays. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're just tuning in, I'm Emily Severidge, live in our digital studio, providing you with some early afternoon updates. WNCT is bringing you live streamed updates every Monday through Friday at 1.30 p.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. to bring you the latest and up-to-date news before our nightly newscast. American Airlines is planning to resume its service to the Pitt-Greenville Airport by early January. 
On January 5th, American Airlines will resume flights at the Pitt Greenville Airport. Flights were originally halted over the summer due to the coronavirus pandemic, and that suspension was extended into early December. An American Airlines spokesperson said that this was the only this is only possible because of Congress's passage of a second COVID-19 stimulus. Airline officials say that with the support from the CARES Act payroll support program, they'll be able to resume flights by early January. Airline officials say they're looking forward to resuming service to Greenville and to do their part to help our country recover from the pandemic. Here at WNCT, we are learning new information about two men that were found dead at a Fort Bragg training area earlier this month. The bodies of Master Sergeant William Levine and veteran Timothy Dumas were found in the woods near Manchester Road back on December 2nd. Dumas's death certificate has officially been released, stating the, de the veteran died of gunshot wounds to the head and chest. Master Sergeant Levine's death certificate has not yet been released and the details surrounding his death are still unknown. Officials report that both men were apparently under investigation for using and selling drugs, and Army officials suspect their deaths were likely a drug deal gone wrong. Both men had multiple pending and dismissed charges against them. Levine was also involved in the 2018 shooting death of Green Barrett Mark Leshiker. Investigators determined that Levine acted out of self-defense and was therefore not charged in the murder. However, Leshikar's mother has publicly stated she believes Levine murdered her son and justice was not served. The Army is also currently investigating the death of specialist Enrique Roman Martinez. Martinez was found decapitated after he disappeared Memorial Day weekend while camping with friends at Cape Lookout. There's a picture of specialist Enrique Martinez right there. No one has yet to be arrested in any of these three cases. You can stay with WNCT for all of the latest information on those two developing stories. Well, that wraps up this WNCT Now early afternoon update. I'll be back again at 4 o'clock with an evening update for you. Thanks so much for watching.